Good morning traders and welcome to our technical video update for Friday. Obviously it's been a big week on currency markets. We're going to start off here and have a look at the biggest loser this week and that is of course the British pound after British Prime Minister Theresa May on Sunday suggested that she was going to trigger Article 50 before March next year. It's interesting, um, the traders have been selling the expectation rather than the fact because the UK economy is actually doing reasonably well compared to what the Bank of England estimates were after the Brexit vote. But as you can see here on the daily chart, this is the low that was created back in July this year. The market was range bound and recently we've broken down through that low with the past four trading days, one, two, three, four, three of them being engulfing candles to the downside. So at the moment we're expecting um, the overwhelming trend at the moment is to the downside. However, be very mindful tonight if you are in a short position on the pound, the non-farm payrolls number out of the US tonight is an extremely important number for the financial markets. I would suspect the most important number for this month. So potentially look at whether or not it may be better to exit your position leading into that data number and squaring that position before the weekend. I'll leave that decision with you, but you will see increased volatility on the US dollar and the pound this Friday. Moving over now to the euro against the US dollar, you can see here we're still relatively range bound here on the euro throughout um, the last three or four months. And we've only just been able to close a daily candle back under the 200 EMA here. But what we've seen recently is that every time we've closed a daily candle under there, the market's popped its head up and come back above it again. But what I note here is this. We actually put a couple of trend lines on here. The range has been getting tighter and tighter. And what we can see here is we're about to potentially break to the downside. Now what's going to force the euro against the US dollar lower? Well overnight we had the latest ECB minutes which showed that the ECB is committed to continuing to buy European bonds, essentially artificially print money, and that helped push the euro lower overnight. If we see the US economy grow jobs greater than 172,000 today, when that data is released around 10.30 p.m. Australian daylight, time, Melbourne and Sydney time, because we're now on daylight savings, that would put upward pressure on the US dollar and that would probably get this euro out of this trading range and back lower, heading back towards this low over here that was created in July. So be well aware of that. The resistance level is likely going to be this trend line here. And if we get a strong jobs number out of the US tonight, likely a move to the downside. Really not a lot going on here with respect to a wave pattern on the daily chart. If we have a look at the four hour chart, there's nothing really happening there either. We've just simply got a very range bound tight market. And as I said, these trend lines are going to be really important there to watch and see what happens with this economic data tonight. Okay, now let's have a look at the US dollar against the yen because this one has been on a runaway tear back higher for the past eight or nine trading days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and now heading into the ninth. Now, what's important to look at here with the US dollar against the yen is to have a look at this trend line that's been in play all throughout this year, that we've talked about it in this technical report a lot. It acted as resistance all the way down through here. And just recently, the last three trading days, we are now trading well above this trend line here, heading back towards the 200 EMA. Now, again, tonight, a better than expected jobs number is going to see this continue higher. If you're someone looking to get long on the US dollar, then if we get a pullback tonight on the US dollar, because we are going to get one at some point. I mean, this market's not going to be a straight line up for much longer. We're going to get a pullback. If you're looking for a pullback, potentially look for a pullback on the daily chart back to this 50 EMA. Back to this 50 EMA, if we poke through that back here to this trend line here, if you want to get long, you'd be looking then for a couple of days of um, buyers coming back on the US dollar, because I think between now and Christmas, the current buying activity 
the upward pressure on US Treasury yields is likely going to continue to see this US dollar rise between now and Christmas. That's the mail I'm getting from a lot of my colleagues. So if you're looking to get long on the US dollar, always potentially look for that pullback opportunity. Let the buyers come back in and then enter your trade. I don't want to see you, um, you know, buying the low points because buying the lows is essentially like catching a falling knife. You're better off to wait for a pullback as the buyers come back in, then potentially look to get long on your position. So US dollar yen, broken that trend line, that's seen a flood of money come for the green back there. Let's have a look at the Aussie dollar and the Kiwi dollar here. Range bound at the moment between this high of about 77 and a half cents down to this low here that we've seen recently at 74, about 74 and a half cents, which is about this 200 moving average. Again, tonight, if we see weakness on the Aussie between now and the close of trading platforms Saturday morning, that's all going to have to do with the non-farm payrolls. But we've got the Aussies being supported right now by the 50 EMA. If we get a strong US payrolls number tonight, I would expect to see the Aussie dollar trade back down to this 200 EMA and then early next week see some potential pressure to the downside underneath this 200 EMA. That's what I'd be watching. Okay, so if you're looking to square your positions before the weekend, if you are short, look for this 200 EMA to act as some support there. On the Kiwi dollar against the US dollar, really interesting to note here because the Kiwi's seen some genuine weakness in the past four trading sessions here. You can see it clearly here, one, two, three, and now showing some weakness again this Friday. We've now traded well underneath the 50 EMA, which has been acting as an area of some, some support here, like a picket fence here for about five or six trading days. We've traded well under that with two engulfing candles to the downside, one and then another one, a little bit of support off the low, but both with lots of downward pressure. Again, tonight, if we see that strong US jobs number and you are short on the US uh, on the Kiwi dollar against the US, look for this area right here, the 200 EMA and this trend line here to act as an area of support. That may be an area where you might like to exit, bank some profit, get out of your positions, either look for long again when the buyers come back in, or if you're looking to short the Kiwi over the coming months against the US dollar, wait for a break to the downside and then enter your position. Pound versus yen, another important currency pair, in fact, the most uh, volatile currency pair in the markets amongst the majors. And we can see here, look at the area where we are right now, really important area. Look at here, this pound is um, falling just as we speak here to fresh new lows here against uh, the yen, we may have some economic activity happening right now or an announcement from the Bank of Japan or an intervention. So we'll keep an eye on that. Keep up to date with our Go Markets Facebook page this morning. But with this is a daily chart. So this is significant volatility right now. We're seeing if we go into the one hour chart, I'll show you just how significant it is. There you go, right there. So we'll keep you updated on that in the course of the next hour or two and this morning. But the pound is under enormous pressure at the moment. Um, uncertainty about the UK economy with Theresa May's comments. We've broken below these lows that stretch back to July 2016. And if we close a daily candle under here, then there's probably going to be more downward pressure for the pound against the yen. Now, let's just check and see whether or not this is the pound reacting or the yen. Let's actually see here the pound against the Aussie. This is a good exercise for you. What I've just done there is we can see here that the pound against the yen's falling right now. Now, is it the pound falling or is it the yen rising? Well, if I go straight away to the pound versus the US dollar, the pound against the US dollar is falling. If I go the pound against the Aussie, the pound against the Aussie is falling. But if I now go to, let's say, a yen cross, Kiwi against the yen, well, there's no movement here. So it is obviously, clearly, the pound is under pressure. We've either got some comments from a, uh, an official or simply some large speculators entering short positions. But I would suggest we've got some more commentary from either the Bank of England or perhaps a government official, someone, a member of parliament about Brexit. Even there we go, even the larger lows. So keep an eye on your charts, look after your risk, and I will see you on Money Exchange tonight, 6.30, Channel 602, Sky News, when I'll interview Gavin Parry from Parry International Trading in Hong Kong 
and ask him why he doesn't think the US Federal raise rates this year. That's 6.30pm, Sky News Money, Channel 602. Have a great Friday.